Good day, everyone. We are Group 9, and our report is all about International Electrical Testing Association, or NETA. Before that, let me introduce first the reporters. The first reporter is me. My topic is all about introduction to inspection and test procedures on circuit breakers or medium voltage. The second reporter is Celery. Inspection and test procedures on circuit breakers, oil medium, and high voltage is her topic. The last reporter is Luigi. His topic is all about inspection and test procedures on rotating machinery, DC motors, and generators. So for the introduction, the International Electrical Testing Association, or NETA, was formed in 1972 to establish uniform testing procedures for electrical equipment and apparatus. NETA has been an accredited standards developer for the American National Standard Institute since 1996. NETA's scope of standards activity is different from that of IE, IEEE, NECA, NEMA, and UL in testing electrical equipment and systems. NETA continues to reference other standards developers documents where applicable. NETA's review and updating to presently published standards consider national and international standards. NETA's measures may be used internationally as well as in the United States. NETA firmly endorses global standardizations, IEC standards, as well as American consensus standards are taken into consideration by NETA's ballot pools and reviewing committees. The first NETA maintenance testing specification for electrical power equipment and system was published in 1975 since, since 1989. Revised edition of maintenance testing specification have been published in 1993, 1997, and 2001. On the other hand, the, the NETA standard for maintenance testing specification for electrical power equipment and system was developed for use by those responsible for the con continued operation of existing electrical system and equipment to guide them in specifying the performing the necessary tests to ensure that this system and apparatus perform satisfac satisfactorily, minimizing downtime and maximizing life expectancy. NETA aids in ensuring safe, reliable operation of existing electrical power system and equipment. Maintenance testing can identify potential problem areas before, before they become major problems requiring expensive and time-consuming solution. NETA structures is divided into 10 separate and defined sections. For the section 1, there is a general scope. Section 2, ap applicable references. Section 3, qualification of testing organization and personnel. Section 4, division of responsibility. Section 5, general. Section 6, power sy system studies. Section 7, inspection and test procedures. Section 8, System Function Test. Term, section 9, Thermographic Survey. Section 10, Electromagnetic Field Testing. Section 7, Structure. Section 7 is the main body, body NETA with specific information on what to do rel relative to the inspection and maintenance testing of electrical power distribution, equipment, and systems. It is not intended that this document explain how to test specific pieces of equipment or system. Section 7 consists of sections specific to each particular type of equipment within those sections. There are typically three main bodies of information. First is visual and mechanical inspection. Two is electrical test. Three is test values. Results, results of electrical tests and result of visual and mechanical inspection. Some but not all visual and mechanical inspections have an associated test value or result those items with an expected result or ref reference under section 3.1. Test values, visual and mechanical. For example, section 7. For example, Section 7.1 switchgear and switchboard assemblies 
item. 7.1.1.72 calls for verifying tightness of connection using calibrated torque wrench method. Under the test, test values. Visual and mechanical section, 7.1.3.1.2. The expected results for that particular task are listed within section 3.1. With reference back to the original task description on item 7.1.7.7. And for the result of electrical test, as, as you can see, each electrical test has a corresponding expected result. And the test and the result have identical numbers. If the electrical test is I, I tempor, the expected results under the test value section is also I tempor. For example, under section 7.1, 7.15.1, rotating machinery, AC induction motors and generators, item 7.15.122, item 2 within the electrical test section, calls for performing an insulation resistance test in accord, accordance with IEEE standard 43. Under the test values, electrical section, the expected result for the particular task are listed in the test value section under them. Optional test. The purpose of this specification is assured that all tested electrical equipment and systems supplied by either contractor or owner are operational and within applicable standards and manufacturers publish tolerances and that equipment and system are installed by design specification. These are the certain tests are assigned an optional classification. The following considerations are used in determining the use of optional classification. First is, does another listed test provide similar information? Second is, how does the cost of the test compare to the cost of other tests providing similar information? How commonplace is the test procedure? It is new technology. Sec section 1, general scope. Maintenance testing specification. This specification covers the suggested field tests and inspections that are available to assess the suitability for continued service and reliability of electrical power distribution equipment and systems. The purpose of these specifications is to assure that tested electrical equipment and system are operational. The work specified in this specification may involve, involve hazardous voltages, materials, operation, and equipments. This specification do not purport to address all of the safety problems associated with the, with the use. It is responsibility for, for the user to review all applicable regulatory limitations prior to the use of this specification. Section 2. These are the ap applicable references. Codes, standards, and specification. All inspections and field tests shall be in, in accordance with the latest edition of the following codes, standards, and specification, ex, except as the following otherwise herein. First is American National Standard Institute. Second is ASTM International. Three is Association of Edison Illuminating Companies. Four, Canadian Standards Association. Five, Electrical Apparatus Service Association. Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Insulated Cable Engineers Association. International Electrical Testing Association. National Fire Protection Association. Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA. State and Local Codes and Ordinances. Underwriters Laboratories Incorporated to UL. 2.2 Other Publications man, Manufacturers instru, Instruction Manuals for, for Equipment to be Tested. Um, it belongs. Um, 
2.3 is contact information. Section 3, qualification of testing personnel. The subjective assessment required by this NETA maintenance standard is unique compared to the American national standards. In that, it deals with the evaluation of service age equipment. While technicians performing tests and inspections on new equipment deal with finite test values, those working with service aged, those working with service age equipment must form recommendation based on judgment. Two technicians performing this electrical test and inspection shall be trained and experienced concerning the apparatus and system being evaluated. Three, test. Test technicians shall have knowledge of experience with the specific device under test. Additional personnel qualifications are as follows. Testing organizations, owner utilizing testing companies shall require that each on-site crew leader shall hold a current certification. Level 3 or higher in electrical testing, the certification shall be in accordance with ANSI NETA ETT 2010. Standard for Certification of Electrical Testing Personnel. Manufacturer Service Personnel, Field Service Personnel of the manufacturer, manufacturer of the equipment being evaluated shall be certified by the manufacturers to perform these electrical tests and inspections. In-house testing personnel, in-house testing personnel, owners having in-house testing personnel shall utilize an independent outside certification organization or have some system or qualification which provides an equivalent level of assurance that their personnel are qualified to perform electrical test testing. Owners are encouraged to utilize unsigned ETT 2010 as means they determine meaning critical testing personnel possess the training, experience, and proof requirements. Section 4, Division of Responsibility. Section 4.1, the user, the user, the user shall, shall be responsible for all power switching of equipment and for providing equipment in a ready-to-test to condition. The user shall provide the testing organization with the following. First, a short circuit analysis, a coordination study, an arc flash hazard analysis, and protective device setting sheet as described in section 6 if, if applicable. 2. The most current set of electrical drawings and instruction manuals applicable to the scope of work relative, relative to the equipment under test. 3. An itemized description of equipment to be inspected and tested. A determination of who shall provide a suitable and stable source of electrical power to each test site. Notifications of when equipment becomes available for maintenance tests. Work shall be coordinated to expedite project schedules. Six site-specific hazard notification and safety training. Section 4.2, the testing organization. The testing organization shall provide the following. All field technical services, tooling, equipment, instrument, and technical supervisions to perform such tests and inspections, specific power requirements for test equipment. Three, notification to the owner's representative prior to the commencement of any testing. Five, timely notification of any system material or workmanship, which is found deficient on the basis of maintenance test. Five, a record of, record of all tests and final report. Section 5, General. 5.1, Safety and Precautions. All parties involved must be cognizant of industry standard safety procedures. First, first is safety practices shall include but not limited to the following requirement, requirements. All, applic all ap applicable provisions of the Occupational Safety and Health Act, particularly OSHA 29 CFR 1910. ANSI NFPA 70E, Standard for Electrical Safety in Workplace. The Electrical Safety Program Book by Kenneth G. Mastrullo, 
Ray A. Jones and Jane G. Jones and and FTA. Apli applicable state and local safety operating procedures. Thus is owner safety practices. Two, a safety lead person shall be identified prior to the commencement of work. Three, a safety briefing shall be conducted prior to the commencement of work. For all tests shall be performed with the apparatus, the energizer, and grounded except where otherwise specifically required to be ungrounded or energized for certain tests. The last is the testing organization shall have is this, this designated safety representative on the projects to supervise of operation with respect to safety. This individual may be same person described in 5.1. Section 5. point Test Instrument Calibration. The testing organizations shall have a calibration program that ensure I, that assures that all applicable test instruments are maintained with rated accuracy for each test instrument calibrated. So the firm providing calibration service shall maintain up-to-date instrument calibration instruction and procedure for each test instrument calibrated. Next is the accuracy shall be directly traceable to the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Four, instruments shall be calibrated in accordance with the following frequency schedule. First field instruments, analog and digital, 12, max, 12 months maximum. Laboratory instrument, 12 months maximum. This specialty equipment is also 12 months maximum. Dated calibration label shall be visible on all test equipment. Six records which show the date and result of instrument calibrated or tested must be kept up to date. Seven, calibrating standard shall be of higher accuracy than that of the instrument tested. Five, five point, 5.4 test report. The test report shall include the following. Summary of project, description of equipment tested, description, description of tests, and test data, analysis, and recommendations. Section 5, general. Test, I, test report. This is the continuation of the test report. Uh, test data record shall include the following minimum requirements. Identification of testing organization. Second is equipment identification. Third, humidity, temperature, and other conditions that may affect the result of the tests and calibrations. Date of inspection, inspections test, maintenance, and or calibration. Next is identification of the testing technician. Next is identification of inspection, test, maintenance, and or calibration to be performed and recorded. Indication expected result when calibration are to perform as well as indication of as found and as left result as applicable. Thus, is sufficient spaces allowed all results and comments to be indicated. Three, the testing organization shall furnish a copy or copies of the complete report as specified in maintenance testing contract. Section six, power system studies. 6.1, short circuit studies. Scope of Scope of the study. Determine the short circuit available current at each component of the electrical system and ab ability of the component to withstand and interrupt the current. Provide an analysis of all possible operating scenarios which will be or have been influenced by proposed or complete additions or changes to the subject. Procedure. The short circuit study shall be performed in accordance with the recommended practices and procedures set forth in ANSI 
or I E E E standard three nine nine and the step by step procedures outlined in short circuit calculation chapters of I E E E standard one four one and ANSI I I E E E I E E E standard two four two study report result of short circuit study shall be summarized in the final report containing the following basis basis description purpose. Purpose and scope of the study. Tabulations of the data used to model the system components and co corresponding one-line diagram. Next is description of the scenarios evaluated and identification of scenario used to evaluate equipment chart circuit ratings. Tabulations of equipment chart circuit ratings versus available fault duties. The tabulation shall identify the percentage operated short circuits and clearly note equipment with insufficient ratings. Thus is conclusions and recommendations. Coordination studies on under 6.4 power system study. One, determine the extent Scope of study. Determine the extent of overcurrent protective device coordination for the scope. Compromise coordination determine protective device types, characteristics, settings, or operating that permit ranges of non coordination of overcurrent protective devices. For proceed, I to provide an analysis of all possible operating scenarios will which will be or have been influenced by the proposed or completed addition or change to the subject system. Procedure. The coordination study shall be performed in accordance with the recommended practices and procedures set forth in ANSI IEEE Standard 399 and ANSI IEEE Standard 242. Protective device Selection and setting shall comply with the requirements of National Electrical Code. Code. Study report. Results of the coordination study shall be summarized in final report containing the following. First basis, description, purpose, and scope of the, of the study and corresponding one-line diagram. Second time, current. Curves, selective coordination ratios or uses, or selective coordination table of circuit breakers demonstrate the coordination of overcurrent protective devices to the scope. Tabulations of protective devices identifying circuit location, manufacturer, type range of, of adjustment, IEEE -E -E, device number. Current transformer ratios, recommended settings or device size, and re reference time current curve. Implementation. The, the owner shall engage an independent testing firm for the purpose of inspecting, setting, testing, and calibrating the protective relays, circuit breakers, uses, and other applicable devices as outlined in this specification. Arc flash hazard analysis. Scope of the study. Determine arc flash incident energy levels and flash protection boundary distance based on the result of the short circuit and coordination studies. Procedure. Identify all location and equipment to be included in arc flash hazard analysis. First, prepare a one line diagram of the power system. Next is perform, perform a short circuit study in accordance with section 6.1. Perform coordination study in accordance with sec section 6.2. Next is identify the possible system operating modes including tiebreaker positions, parallel generation, etc. Calculate the Calculate the arcing fault current flowing through each branch for each fault location using the empirical formula in accordance with NFPA, IEEE, or other standards. Determine the time required to clear 
the arsing fault carried using the protective device setting and associated trip curves. Next is select the working distances based on system voltage and equipment class. Calculate the incident energy energy at each fault location at the prescribed working distance. Calculate the flash protection boundary at each fault location. Document the, ass the assessment in reports and one-line diagrams. This is place appropriate labels on the equipment. Study report. For study report, these are the results of our flash study shall be summarized in final report containing the following one ba basis method of hazard assessment description purpose scope and date of the study two tabulation of the data used to model the system components and corresponding one line diagram three description of the scenarios evaluated and identification of the scenario used to evaluate equipment ratings for tabulation of equipment incident energies, hazard risk categories, and flash protection boundaries. The tabulation shall identify and clearly note equipment that exceeds allowable incident energy ratings. Five required arc flash labeling and placement of labels. Six conclusions and recommendations. Load flow studies under power system study. For the scope, Determine active and reactive power voltage, current, current, and power factor throughout the electrical system. Provide an analysis of all possible operating scenarios which will be or have been influenced by the proposed or complete additions or changes to the subject system. Procedure. The load flow study shall be performed in accordance with the recommended practices and procedures set forth in ANSI IEEE Standard 399. Study report. Resort of the load flow study shall be summarized in final report containing the following. First is basis description, purpose, and scope of the study. Second, tabulation of the data used to model the system components corresponding one-line diagram. Three is description of scenarios evaluated and, and the basis for each. For tabulation of power and current flow versus equipment ratings, the tabulation shall identify the percentage of rated and the, and the scenario on which the percentage is based. Overloaded equipment shall be clearly noted. Next is tabulation of system voltages versus equipment ratings. Tabulation of system, system real and reactive power losses with areas of concern are clearly noted. And the last is conclusion and recommendation. Stability studies. For the scope of study, you need to determine the ability of electrical system synchronous machines to remain in step with one another following a disturbance. Provide an analysis or disturbances for all possible operating scenarios which will be or have been influenced by purpose of completed ad additions or changes to the subject system. Procedure. The stability study shall be performed in accordance with the recommended practices and procedures set forth in ANSI IEEE Standard 399. Study report. Result of the stability study shall be summarized in final report containing this following. Basis, description, purpose, and scope of the study. Tabulations of data used to model the system components corresponding one-line diagram. Description of the scenarios evaluated in tabulation or graph showing the calculation result. Conclusion and recommendation. Section 6.6, .6, Harmonic Analysis Studies. For the scope of the study, determine the impact of nonlinear loads and their associated harmonic contribution on the voltage and current throughout the electrical system. Procedure. 
The harmonic analysis study shall be performed in accordance with the recommended practices and procedures set forth in ANSI IEE Standard 399. Section 7, Inspection and Test Procedures. Section 7.1, Switchgear and Switchboard Assemblies. 1. Visual and Mechanical Inspection Inspect physical, electrical, and mechanical conditions, including evidence of moisture of corona. Inspect Uncourage alignment, grounding, and required area clearances. 3. Prior to cleaning the unit, perform as fun tests if required. 4. Clean the unit. 5. Verify the fuse and or circuit breaker sizes and types correspond to drawings and co coordination study as well as to the circuit breaker's address for micro microprocessors communications packages. Number six is verify the current and voltage transformer ratios correspond to the drawing. Next, inspect bolted electrical connection for high resistance. Confirm cor Correct operation and sequence of electrical and mechanical interlock system. Verify correct barrier and shutter installation in operation. Exercise all active components. 12. Inspect mechanical indicating devices for correct operation. 13. Verify that filters are in place and or vents are clear. Perform visual and mechanical inspection of instrument transformers in accordance with Section 7.10. Inspect control power transformer. And last is perform a slap test. That is for the visual and mechanical inspection in Section 7.1, switch gear and switchboard assemblies. The next is electrical test. For the electrical test, perform resistance measurement through bolted electrical connections with low resistance ohmmeter in accordance with section 7.1.1, if applicable. To perform insulation resistant test for one minute on each bus section, face to face and face to ground, apply voltage in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Perform dielectric with stand voltage test on each bus section, each face to ground with faces not under test ground, in accordance with the manufacturer's published data. The voltage shall be applied for one minute, refer to section 7.1.3 before performing the test. For perform insulation resistant test or control wiring with respect to the ground, the applied potential shall be 500 volts. DC to 500 volt to 300 volt rated cable and 1000 volts DC for 600 volt rated cable. The test duration shall be one minute for units with solid state components or control devices that cannot toler tolerate the applied voltage. Follow the manufacturer's recommendation. By perform electrical tests or instrument transformers in accordance with Section 7.10. Perform ground resistant tests in accordance with Section 7.13. 7. Determine the accuracy of all meters and calibrate what our meter in accordance with Section 7.11. 8. Is control power transformer. 3. Test values. For the test values, the first is visual and mechanical. Com compare bolted connection resistance values to values of similar connection. In investigate values that divide from those of similar bolted connection by more than 50% of the lowest value. Two bolt torque levels should be in accordance with the manufacturer's published data. Three, result of the thermographics Thermographic surveys shall be in accordance with Section 9. 3.2 Test Values Electrical For the test value in electrical, 
you need to compare voltage connection resistance values to values of similar connections. Investigate values that divide it from those of similar voltage connections by more than 50% of the lowest value. Next is insulation resistance value of bus insulation should be in accordance with the manufacturer's published data. Values, values of insulation resistance less than this table of manufacturer's recommendation should be investigate, investigated. Dielectric with stand voltage test should be should not proceed until insulation resistance level are raised above minimum values. If no evidence of distress or insulation, failure is observed by the end of the total time of the voltage application during the test. The test dielectric with stand voltage specimen is considered to have passed the test. Section 7.2. Point one, point one. Transformers, dry type, air cooled, low voltage, small. This category consists of powered transformers with windings rated 600 volts or less and size assess equal to less than 167 kil kilovolts. Um, single phase or 500 kVA, three phase. One, visual and mechanical inspection. Inspect physical and mechanical condition. Second is inspect anchorage, alignment, and grounding. Next step is prior to cleaning the unit, perform as found test if required. Four, clean the unit. Five, inspect bolted electrical connection for high resistance. Six is perform as left test. Seven, verify those as laptop connections are as specified. Electrical test. Perform resistant measurement through voltage connection with low resistance ometer if applicable in accordance with section 7.2.1.1.1. 2. Perform insulation resistance test winding to winding and each winding to, to ground. Apply voltage in accordance with the manufacturer's published data. Calculate the dielectric absorption ratio or polarization index. 3. Perform turn ratio test at designated top position. Section 7.2.1.2 Transformers dry type air cooled large. This category consists of power transformer with windings rated higher than 600 volts and low voltage transformer larger than 167 kVA. Single phase or 500 kVA three phase. One, visual and visual and mechanical inspection. First, we need to inspect physical and mechanical condition, including evidence of moisture and corona. Next step is inspect anchorage alignment and grounding. Three prior to cleaning the unit, perform as fan test if required. Next step, clean the unit. Fifth. Verify the control and alarm setting on temperature indicators are as specified. Verify that cooling fans operated correctly. Inspect bolted electrical connections for high resistance. Perform, perform specific inspection and mechanical tests as recommended by the manufacturer. Perform as left test. Verify that as laptop connections are specified. And last for visual and mechanical inspection is verify the presence of surge arresters. And for electrical tests, we need to perform per resistant measurement to bolted connection with the low resistance ometer if applicable in accordance with section 7.2.1.2.1. Perform insulation resistant test winding to winding and each winding to ground. For the continuation, of electrical tests, we need to perform insulation power factor or dissipation factor tests on all windings in accordance with the test equipment manufacturer's published data. Perform a power factor or dissipation factor tip up test on winding rated greater than 2.5 kilovolts. 
perform turns ratio test at designated top position, perform an ex excitation current test on each phase, measure the resistance on each winding at designated top position, measure core insulation resistance at 500 volts DC if the core is insulated and if the core grab, ground strap is removable. removable. Perform an applied voltage test on all high and low voltage winding to ground, verify correct secondary voltage phase to phase and phase to neutral after energy energization and prior to loading. Plus is test surge arresters in accordance with section 7.19. The next topic for inspection and test procedure is transformers liquid field. For the visual and mechanical inspection in the transformers and liquid field, first step is inspect physical and mechanical condition. Second, inspect anchorage alignment and grounding to verify the presence of PCB labeling if applicable. Prior to the cleaning, the unit perform as found test if required. Clean by bushings and Control cabinets. Six, verify the operation of alarm, control, and trip circuits from temperature and level indicators, pressure relief device, and fault pressure re relay if applicable. Seven, verify that cooling fans and pumps operate correctly. Inspect bolted electrical connection for high resistance. Nine, verify the correct liquid level in tanks and bushing. I bushing. Other. Verify that positive pressure is maintained on gas block, blanket transformers. Perform inspection and mechanical tests as recommended by a manufacturer. Last is test load top, top changer in accordance with section 7.12 if applicable. For, for the continuation, verify the presence of transformer search arresters. 14th, perform a slap test. And for the last test, verify the energy energized top changer position is left as specified. And for the electrical test on transformers liquid field, first is perform resistance measured through bolted connection with low resistance ohmmeter if applicable in accordance with section 7.2.2.1. Two, perform insulation resistance test, winding to winding and each winding to ground. Apply voltage in accordance with, with the manufacturer's published data. Calculate the polar, polarization index. Perform 10 turns ratio tests at the de designated top position. Four, perform insulation power factor or dissipation factor test on all windings in accordance with the test equipment manufacturer's published data. Fifth, perform power factor or dissipation factor test on each bushing. Perform excitation current test in accordance with the test equipment manufacturer's publi published data. Seven, measure the resistance of each winding at the designated top position. The next step is if the core ground strap is accessible, remove and measure the core insulation resistance at 500 volts DC. Ninth step is measure the percentage of oxygen in gas blanket if applicable. Tenth, remove a sample of insulating liquid in accordance of ASTM D923. Remove a sample of insulating liquid in accordance with ASTM D3613 and perform dissolved gas analysis or DGA in accordance with ANSI IEEE C57.104 or ASTM D3612. 12. Test, an, test the instrument transformer in accordance with section 7.10. 13. The search arresters in accordance with section 7.19. 14. Test the transformer's neutral grounding impedance devices if applicable. 7. 0.3.1 cable low voltage low energy. 7.3.2 cable low voltage 600 volts maximum. 
for the visual and mechanical inspection, low energy and 600 volt maximum are the same. Inspect exposed sections of cable for physical damage and evidence of overheat. Inspect bolted electrical connections for high resistance. Inspect compression, compression applied connectors for correct cable match and indentation. For the electrical test, perform, perform resistant measurement through bolted connection with low resistance ohmmeter if applicable in accordance with section 7.3.2.1. Perform an insulation resistant test on each conductor with respect to ground and adjacent conductors. The applied potential shall be 500 volts DC for 300 volt rated cable and 1000 volt DC for 600 volt rated cable. The test duration shall be one minute. Last for electrical test is verify uniform resistance of parallel conduct. Test values. Test values, visual and mechanical. Compare voltage connection resistance values to values of similar connection. Invest investigate values that divide from those of similar voltage connections by more than 50% of lowest value. Next is volt torque level should be in accordance with the manufacturer's published data. Test values electrical. For the electrical test value, you should compare voltage you should compare voltage connection resistance values to values to, of similar connections. Investigate values that divide from those of similar voltage connection by more than 50% of lowest value. Insulation resistance values should be compared to previously obtained result and similar circuits, but not less than two or but not less than two mega ohms. For the in section seven point four metal enclosed busways, the visual and mechanical inspection should inspect. Physical and mechanical condition, inspect anchorage alignment and grounding, inspect bolted electrical correction for high resistance, confirm physical orientation in accordance with the manufacturer's label to ensure adequate cooling, examine the outdoor busways for removal of whip hole plugs if applicable, and for the correct installation of the joint shield, inspect and clean ventilating open openings. Two, electrical test, perform resistance measuring measurements through bolted connection and bus joints with low resistance ohmmeter, if applicable, in accordance with section 7.4.1. Perform insulation resistance test on each busway for one minute, face to face and face to ground. Per perform a dielectric with stand voltage test on each busway, face to ground with Faces not under test grounded in accordance with the manufacturer's published data. Next is perform a contact resistance test on each connection point of the uninsulated busway. On the insulated busway, measure the resistance of assembled busway section and compare values with the adjacent faces. Plus is verify the operation of busway space heaters. For test values. Test values, visual and mechanical. Compare bolted connection resistant values to values of similar connections. Bolt torque levels should be in accordance with the manufacturer's published data. Result of thermographic survey shall be in accordance with the section 9. Test values in electrical should compare bolted connection resistant values to values of similar connection, investigate values that devi devi deviate from those of similar voltage connection by more than 50% of the lowest value. 7.1 switch air, air low voltage. For the visual and mechanical inspection of switches, air, lo air low voltage. First, inspect Physical and mechanical condition. 
Inspect anchorage alignment, grounding, required clearances. Prior to cleaning the unit, perform as found test if required. Clean the unit, verify correct blade alignment, verify the fuse sizes and types are in accordance with drawings, short circuit study, and coordination study. Verify that each fuse has adequate mechanical support and contract integrity. Inspect bolted electrical connection for high resistance. Verify operation and sequencing of interlocking system. Next is verify that face barrier mounting is intact. Verify correct operation of indicating and control devices. Use appropriate lubrication on moving current carrying parts and moving and sliding surfaces. And for the electrical test, you should perform perform resistant measurement to bolted connection with low resistance ohmmeter if applicable in accordance with section 7.5.111 measure con contact resistance across each switch switch blade and fuse holder third perform insulation resistance test for 1 minute on each pole face to face face to ground with switch closed and across each open pole Apply voltage in accordance with the manufacturer's published data. Next step is measure fuse resistance. Next is verify cubicle space heater operation. Perform a ground fault test in accordance with section 7.14 if applicable. Per perform tests on other protective devices in accordance with se section 7.9 if applicable. And for, for the section 7.5.2, switches oil medium voltage, visual and mechanical inspection. In, first is inspect physical and mechanical condition. Second, inspect anchorage alignment, grounding, and required clearances. Third, prior to cleaning the unit, perform as fun test if required. Clean the unit. Perform mechanical operator test in accordance with the manufacturer's published data, if applicable. Verify correct operation and adjustment of motor operator, limit switches, and mechanical interlocks, if applicable. Verify that each fuse holder has adequate mechanical support and contact integrity, if applicable. Verify that fuse sizes and types are in accordance with drawing short circuit studies and co coordination of the studies. And for the electrical test, on switches oil medium voltage first perform perform resistant measurement to bolted connection with low resistant ohmmeter if applicable perform a contact pole resistant test perform insulation in resistant test for one minute on each pole face to face and face to ground with the switch close and across each open pole apply voltage in accordance with the manufacturer's published data perform insulation resistant test on all control wiring with respect to the ground, the applied potential shall be 500 volts DC for 300 volt rated cable and 1000 volts DC for 600 volt rated cable. The test duration shall be in one minute. For unit with solid state, components or control devices that cannot tolerate that applied voltage follow the manufacturer's recommendation. Perform a dielectric withstand voltage test on each pole with the switch closed. Test each pole to ground with all poles grounded. Remove a sample of insulating liquid in accordance with ASTM D923.S. And for the seven, for the switches, vacuum medium voltage, the visual and mechanical inspection should do inspect physical and mechanical condition, inspect anchorage alignment grounding and required clearances. Prior to cleaning the unit, perform as found test if required. Clean the unit, perform mechanical operator test in accordance with the manufacturer's published data. Verify correct operation adjustment of motor operator, limit switches, and mechanical interlocks if applicable. Measure critical distance on operating mechanism mechanism as recommended by the manufacturer. Next is inspect insulating assemblies for evidence 
a physical damage or contaminated surfaces. Next is verify that each use holder has adequate support and contact integrity. Verify that use sizes and types are in accordance with drawings, short circuit studies, and coordination studies. Next step is test all electrical and mechanical interlock system for co correct operation and frequency. The last test for visual and mechanical inspection is Verify that the insulating oil level is correct, if applicable. And for for electrical tests, for electrical tests in pictures vacuum. Oh, sorry for that. For the electrical test of switches vacuum for medium voltage. First test is perform resistant measurement through voltage electrical connection with low resistance ohmmeter if applicable perform a contact pole resistant test perform insulation resistant test for one minute on each pole face to face and face to ground with the switch closed and across and each pole perform a vacuum bottle integrity dielectric with stand voltage test across each vacuum bottle with the switch with the switch switch in the open position in, in strict accordance with the manufacturer's published data. Thus, remove a sample of insulating liquid if applicable in accordance with ASTM D923. The sample shall be tested in accordance with the reference standard. Section 7.5.4, switches SF6, medium voltage, visual and mechanical inspection. Inspect physical and mechanical condition. To inspect and courage alignment, grounding, and required clearances. Next is prior to cleaning the unit. Clean the unit. Inspect and service the machine operator and SFX gas insulated system. Verify the correct operation of SF6 gas pressure alarm and limit switches if applicable. Measure critical distances and measure critical distances as recommended by the manufacturer. Inspect battle bolted electrical connection for high resistance. Verify that use sizes and types are appropriate. For dance with drawings, short circuit studies, and coordination study. Next step is verify that each use holder has adequate mechanical support that contact integrity. Next, you should verify operation and sequencing of interlocking system. And for the last, for visual and me mechanical inspection of switches as a fixed medium voltage. Use appropriate lubrication on moving current carrying parts and on moving and sliding surfaces. For electrical tests, perform resistance measuring through accessible bolted electrical connection with low and low resistance ohmmeter. Perform a contact resistant test. Perform insulation resistant test for one minute on each pole face to face and face to ground with switch closed. <coughs> Remove a sample of SF6 gas and test it. Next, perform a dielectric with stand voltage test across each gas bot bottle with the switch. Is is in the open position in accordance with the manufacturer's published data. Perform insulation resistant test on all control wiring respect to the ground. The applied potential shall be 500 volts DC for 300 volt rated cable and 1000 volt DC for 600 volt rated cable. Um, the test duration of it is shall be one minute for unit units with solid state components. Follow the manufacturer's recommendation. And for the For the section 7.6.1.1, circuit breakers, air insulated case, 
or molded case for visual and mechanical inspection. Inspect physical and mechanical condition. Inspect anchorage and alignment prior to cleaning the unit. Perform a spawn test if required. Operate the circuit breaker to ensure smooth operation. Next is inspect bolted electrical connections for high resistance. Inspect operating mecha mechanisms, contacts, and act shoots in unsealed units. For electrical tests, perform resistance measurement through bolted connection with low resistance ohmmeter. Perform insulation resistance tests for one minute on each pole face to face and face to ground with the circuit breaker closed. Perform a contact pole resistance test. Perform insulation resistance test on all control wiring and with respect to the ground. The applied potential voltage shall be 500 volts DC for 300 volt rated cable and 1000 volt DC for 600 volt rated cable. The test duration shall be in one minute. And for the electrical test, you should determine long time pickup and delay by primary current position. Determine short time pickup and delay by primary current injection. Determine ground fault pickup delay by primary current injection. And determine instantaneous pickup current by primary injection. Test functions of the trip unit by means of secondary injections. And thus perform minimum pickup voltage test on shunt trip and closed coils. For the section 7.6.1.2, circuit breaker, breaker air low voltage power. For the visual and mechanical inspection, inspect physical and mechanical condition. Second is inspect anchorage, alignment, and grounding. Verify that all maintenance devices are available for servicing and operating the breaker. Prior to cleaning the unit, perform a spawn test. Inspect arc shoots, inspect moving and stationary contacts for condi condition, wear and alignment. Verify the primary and secondary contact wipe and other dimensions vital to the satisfactory operation of the breaker arc connect. Perform all mechanical operator and contact alignment tests on both the breaker and its operating mechanism in accordance with the manufacturer's pub published data. Electrical tests. Perform resistant measurement through bolted connection with low resistant ohmmeter. Perform insulated resistant tests for one minute each pole, face to face and face to ground with the circuit breaker closed. Perform insulation resistant tests on all control wiring with the respect to the ground. The applied potential shall be 500 volt DC to 300 volt rated cable and 1000 volt DC to 600 rated to 600 rated volt cable. The test duration shall be one minute for unit with solid state. Components or control devices that cannot tolerate the applied voltage follow the manufacturer's data and for the electrical te test for the electrical test we should determine long time pickup and delay by primary current injection should determine short time pickup and delay by primary current injection determine ground fault pickup and delay by primary current injection determine inst instant instantaneous pickup current by primary current injection. Test functions of cheap unit by means of secondary injections and perform minimum pickup voltage on shunt trip and closed coils. And I think that's all for my report. The next reporter is Celery Passion. Thank you. pleasant day to everyone and welcome to my presentation. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Elori Pasho. My talk is particularly relevant to the continuation of International Electrical Testing Association, NETA. 
So it is a trade association dedicated to improving electrical testing standards in the United States and sharing those standards internationally. NETA is accredited by the American National Standard Institute as the standards developing entity. So let's move on to the next slide, which is protective relays, electromechanical and solid state. So this is the continuation of the last reporter. 5. 27 other voltage relay. So hindi ko nababasahin yung step, sabihin ko na lang kung ano yung nangyayari sa relay na yun. So, this is the relay that contacts that operate when the voltage drop below a set voltage. So, ito yung mostly ginagamit pang protect against voltage drop and to detect short circuit faults, etc. So, next, we have number 6, 32 directional power relay. So, this is a relay that operates on a predetermined volume of power flow in a given direction or an on reverse power flow, such as that resulting from the motoring of the generator upon the loss of its prime mover. So, next slide na tayo. 49R Thermal Replica Relay. So, thermal overload relays are installed in the main circuit when electromechanical protection is adequate. Next, we have the 49T Temperature RTD Relay. So, temperature control relays are used for temperature control when operation is required within a certain range. This relay skims the ambient temperature at a predetermined level. They are also known as the temperature controllers. So, 13 50 instantaneous overcurrent relay. Instantaneous overcurrent relay are used to close the source when the current is very high and a small delay in ascending trip, signal can cause big damage to the protective equipment. 14. The 51 time overcurrent. So, this is where the protective relay initiates a breaker trip based on the combination of the overcurrent magnitude and overcurrent duration. The relay tripping sooner with a greater current magnitude. So, 15. 55 power factor relay. So, this controls relay as automatic and manual function with capability to switch every individual capacitor stage on and off. This shows zero current and zero voltage tripping with alarm indication. So, on features nito is automatic identification of voltage and current source. Next, 16. 59 over voltage relay. So, it is a relay that has contacts that operate when a set voltage is exceeded to the provide an alarm or to trigger a breaker. So, number 17, which is the voltage balance relay. So, this relay provides reliable instantaneous response to block other devices from incorrect operating resulting from a blunt fuse or other fault in a potential transformer circuit. So, lastly, we have the transform transformer sudden pressure relay. 63 transformer sudden pressure relay. A sudden pressure relay is a protection device used to detect transformer or reactor problems. It detects sudden changes in transformer oil or gas pressure due to the internal faults. The sudden pressure relay has an inverse time to characteristics such that more severe faults will cause faster operation. So, next page, we have the 79 reclosive relay. So, ang function ito, so, this is designed to initiate multiple reclosure of a circuit breaker which has been tripped by protective relaying. Next, 
we have the 81 frequently relay. So it is a relay that function at a predetermined phase angle between two voltage or between two currents or between voltage and current. So next, the 85 pilot wire monitor. So this provides the path for the circulating current produced in abnormal condition. So which is sent by the relay and therefore is tripped. This wire also known as a pilot wire. So lastly, you have the 87 differential. So it's a single or three-phase solid state variable percentage differential relay designed to provide selective high-speed differential protection for generation generators, rather, motor and shunt reactors. So for the next page is still the continuation of protective relays, electromechanical and solid state. First, controlled verification. So verify that each of the relay contacts perform its intended function with the control scheme including the breaker strip test, close inhibited test, 86 lockout test, and alarm functions. So for the next slide, motor control, motor starters, low voltage. So for the visual and mechanical inspection, inspect physical and mechanical condition, inspect anchorage, alignment and grounding, inspect air bottles, field media, cooling fans, brushes and brush rigging, inspect voltage electrical connection for high resistance using one or more of the following methods. These are the parallel method, methods use of floor resistance on meter in accordance with section 7.15 3.2 verified brightness of accessible voltage electrical connection by calibrated torque wrench method in accordance with manufacturer's public data third perform thermographic survey in accordance with section 9 number 5 Inspect commutator and tachometer generator. Perform special tests such as air gas, spacing, and machine alignment if applicable. In electrical tests, perform resistance measurement through bolted connection with low resistant ohmmeter if applicable. Perform insulation resistant test on all windings in accordance with ANSI IEA standard 43. Third, perform high potential test in accordance with NEMA and G1. Perform an AC voltage drop test on all poles. Measure armature running current and field current on voltage compared to nameplate. Perform vibration tests. Verify that all protective devices are in accordance in section 7.16. So for the test value, visual and mechanical, number one, inspection. Should be all bubble should be clean. Filtered media should be clean. Cooling fan should be operate. Brushes should be within manufacturer tolerances to continue use. Brush raging should be in draft. Bolt torque level should be accordance with manufacturer's published data. Terminator and tachometer generator should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data and or system design. So the this values electrical compare bolted connection resistance values to values to similar connections. To dialect observation ratio and polarization index shall be compared to previously obtained results and should not be less than one. <coughs> if, no if there is no evidence of distress or insulation failure is observed by the end of the total time, the voltage application during the dialect recent test, the winding is considered to have passed the test. The pole-to-pole -pole voltage 
drop shall not be exceed 5% barrels between poles. Measure running current and field current or voltage should be comparable to name plate data. Measured running current and field current or voltage should be comparable to name plate data. Vibration amplitudes of the uncoupled and uploaded machine should not exceed values. If the values exceed those in the table 100.10, perform complete vibration analysis. Test results of motor starter equipment shall be accordance with section 7.16. So for the next slide, protective relays, microprocessor base. So for the visual and mechanical inspection, first you should record model number, style number, and the social number, firmware revision, software revision, and rated control voltage. Download all events from the event recorder in the filtered and unfiltered mode for performing any test on the relay. Verified, verify operation of light emitting diodes, display and targets. Record passwords for all access levels. Clean the front panel and remove foreign material from the cage. Check the tightness of the connections. Verify that the frame is grounded in accordance with manufacturer's instruction. Download settings from the relay. Print a copy of the settings for the report and compare the settings to those specified in the coordination study. So in the next page, the electrical test. So the steps will be number one, perform insulation resistant test. So you should perform insulation resistant test from each circuit to the grounded frame to accordance with manufacturer's published data. Second, apply voltage or current to all analog inputs and ver verify correct registration. So, apply voltage or current to all analog inputs and verify correct registration of the relay meter function. Next, functional operation. You should check functional operation of each element used in the protection scheme as described for electromechanical and solid state release in the 7.9.1.3 as I said earlier. So, for the control verification, you should check operation of all active digital inputs, check all output contacts, Check all internal function used in the protection scheme. For pilot scheme, perform a loopback test to check the receive and transmit communication circuits. So for the 7.10, which is the instrument transformer, visual and mechanical inspection. So, inspect physical and mechanical condition prior to cleaning the unit perform as it as fun test if required. Third, clean the unit. Fourth, inspect bolted electrical connection for high resistance using one or more of the following methods. So, we have use of long resistance ohmmeter. In accordance with section 7.10 and 7.10.3. Second, verify tightness of accessible bolted electrical connection by calibrated torque wrench method in accordance with the manufacturer's published data. Perform a thermographic survey in accordance with the section 9. So, next. Verify that all required grounding and shortening connection provides contact. Verify correct operation of transformer withdrawal mechanism and grounding operation. Verify correct primary and secondary fuse sizes for voltage transformers. Use appropriate lubrication on moving current carrying parts on a moving and sliding surfaces. And lastly, perform a left test.
electrical test. First, perform resistant measurement. Perform insulation resistant test of each current transformer in wiring to ground. Third, perform a polarity test of each current transformers. Third, fourth, perform a ratio verification test using the voltage or current method. Next, an excitation test on transformer used for relying applications. Current circuits, current transformers terminal. Seven, perform insulation resistant test on the primary winding. Eight, measure insulation power factor or dissipation factors. Nine, measure insulation power factor or dissipation factor. And lastly, verify the current circuits are grounded. For the next slide, we have the electrical test for voltage transformers. So, summarize ko na lang siya kasi mahaba at kulang sa time. So, this is simply um, a test include winding insulation resistant test, winding resistant test, vector group test, tan delta test, no load test or iron losses, load test or copper losses, temperature rise test, partial discharge test, frequently response analyst test, and transformer oil break now test. So, how we will notice that the transformer is failing? So, the symptoms of power quality issues include vibration, excessive buzzing or humming, and overheating. Technicians should occasionally check the power of transformers that supply non-linear non loads such as variety frequency drives or switching power supplies. So, for the next slide, we have the coupling capacitor voltage transformers. So, in all cases, you must determine whether the coupling capacitor is leaky. So, a quick way to test the capacitor is to unplug the output tubes, connect the negative lead of the multimeter to the chassis ground, and use the positive lead of the multimeter to measure the voltage on the socket contact to the corresponds to corresponds to the grid. Next page. Test value of the coupling capacitor voltage transformers. So, the primary voltage is read on a low range voltmeter as the secondary voltage is applied to the seating. The turn ratio is approximately equal to the voltage ratio. So, in most low and medium ratio bashing cities, the saturation level is achieved about 1 volt per turn. So, we have here the visual and the mechanical. Yun yung sinabi ko kanina. The current transformer, voltage transformer, and the coupling capacitor voltage transformers. So, for the next slide, the metering devices, electromechanical and solid state. So, first the visual and mechanical inspection. So, inspect physical and mechanical condition. Inspect bolted electrical connection for higher resistance using one or more of the following methods. Like I said earlier. So, third, inspect cover gasket, cover glass, condition of spiral spring, disc clearance, contacts, in case shortening contacts as applicable prior to cleaning the unit perform as found test if required so clean the unit and verify freedom of movement and play and align rotating disc perform as left test for the electrical test first perform resistance measurement through bolted connection with a low resistance ohmmeter if applicable second verify the accuracy of meters of all cardinal points Third, calibrate meters in accordance with manufacturer's public published data. And lastly, verify all instrument multipliers. 
So we have the metering devices microprocessor base. First, for the visual and the mechanical inspection. So, a metering device for use with the credited operated entertainment machine, such as high tech machine, has a connector for connecting the device to the machine, a controller arranged to record transaction of the machine, and the optical interface coupled to the controller. The optical interface allowed the device to be remotely interrogated by the prior prior of the machine in response to him sending an authenticated lights signal such as from infrared enable mobile device the controller is configured to convey via the interface at least one parameter based on the recorded transaction of the machine which allow the proprietor to, come to carry out secure on the spot inspection without disturbing the machine or gaining access to its internal workings. So for the electrical test. So first apply voltage or current as appropriate to each analog input and verified correct measurement and indication. Second, convert correct operation and setting of each auxiliary input or output feature in use including mechanical relay, digital, and analog. Lastly, confirm measurements and indications are consistent with load percent. So for the test values, we have to the visual mechanics and mechanical. First, tightness of electrical connection shall assure a low resistant connection. Display and indicating devices shall operate per manufacturer's published data. Then, test values electrical should measure and indicate applied values of voltage and current that should be within manufacturer's published tolerance for accuracy. Second, all auxiliary input or output features should operate for settings and manufacturers public publish data. Measurements and indication should be consistent with energized system loads. So for the next page we have the regulating apparatus voltage, step voltage, regulators. First, the visual and the mechanical inspection of these. First, inspect physical and mechanical condition. Inspect the anchorage, alignment and grounding. Record position indicator as found maximum and minimum values. Prior to the cleaning unit, perform as found test if it is required then clean the unit verify the auxiliary device operation inspect both electrical connection for high resistance and ver verify correct operation of motor and drive train and automatic motor cut off at the maximum lower and maximum raised position Verify correct liquid level in all tanks and bushings. Perform specific inspection and mechanical tests as recommended by the manufacturer. Perform an internal inspection. So, ito yung, it will ano, um, remove oil and clean carbon residue and debris from compartment. Inspect contacts for wear and alignment. Inspect electrical and mechanical connection for time is using calibrate torque, wrench method in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Inspect top chargers, compartment, terminal board, contact support board, and insulation, insulating operating components for evidence of moisture, crack, excessive wear, breakage, and sign of electrical trapping. So for the electrical test, 
should perform resistant measurement through bolted connection with a low resistant ohmmeter if applicable perform insulation resistant test on each winding to ground in any of neutral position perform insulation power factor on dissipation power factor test on winding in accordance with test equipment manufacturers published data so next perform power factor dissipation factor test on each bash equipment so for the test values for visual and mechanical test values, first auxiliary devices should operate in accordance with system design. Second, compare bolted connection resistance values to values to similar connection. Bolt torque level should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Result of terminal thermographic survey shall be in accordance with section 9. Motor drivetrain and automatic cutoff should be operated in accordance with manufacturer design intent and automatic motor cutoff should be operated at a maximum lower and maximum raised positions. And liquid level in tanks and bushings should be within indicated tolerances. Next for the test values, electrical. So, compare bolted connection resistance values to values to similar connections. Insulation resistance values should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Maximum, maximum power factor and dissipation factors. Values of liquid field regulation should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Power factors and dissipation factor and capacitance values should be within 10% of the nameplate. Rating for bashings. The regulation should be in a linear ratio throughout the range between the maximum raise and the maximum lower positions. Indicator should be indicate neutral position correctly. Consult the map the factor if finding resistant values vary. Result of insulating liquid test should be accordance. Evaluate results of this sold gas analyzed. Analysis Investigate presence of oxygen and nitrogen gas blanket and heater should be operational. So for the next slide we have the So for the next slide we have the regulating apparatus voltage induction regulators. So first the visual and demand mechanical inspection. First is to inspect physical and mechanical condition. Second is to inspect anchorage, alignment, and grounding. So, record position indicator as found maximum and minimum values. So, prior to cleaning the unit be before performing as found test and clear the unit. Inspect bolted electrical connection for high resistance using one or more of the following methods. Here are the following methods. Use of low resistance ohmmeter, verify tightness of accessible bolted electrical connection, perform a thermographic survey. So next type step kanina. We have to verify correct auxiliary device operation, verify motor and drive train for correct operation and automatic motor cutoff at maximum lower and maximum rates, verify correct liquid level in all tanks, and perform specific inspection and mechanical tests as recommended by the manufacturer. So visually inspect. Wear erosion indicators as vacuum bottles if, if applicable. Perform an internal inspection so it will remove oil, clean carbon residue and debris from compartment, and inspect contacts for wear and alignment. So the next page. 
regulating apparatus, load tops, chargers. So the, for the test values, visual and mechanical, compare bolted connection, resistant values, the values of similar connection, bolt torque level should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Result of the thermographic survey shall be accordance. Auxiliary device operation should be accordance with the design intent. Motor, drive trend, and automatic cutoff should be operated in accordance with manufacturer's design intent. And automatic motor cutoff should be operated at the maximum lower and the maximum position. Liquid level in tank should be within indicated tolerances. Vacuum bottle where erosion indicators should be within manufacturer's recommended tolerances. Contact wear and alignment should be within the manufacturer's recommended tolerances. Bolt torque is level that should be accordance with manufacturer's published data in absence of manufacturer's data. No evidence of moisture, crack, excessive wear, breakage, or electrical tracking should be found. The top charger should be operated through the full range of tops. Operation counter should have an increment change in accordance with top charger operations. So next in the grounding system. For the visual mechanical inspection, we should compare bolted connection resistant values to resistant to values of similar connection. Insulation resistance resistance values should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Maximum winding insulation power factor or dissipation factor values of liquid fit transformer should be in accordance with manufacturer's specifications. Number four, consult the manufacturers of winding resistance values varied by more than one percent measurement of adjustment windings. The special test or adjustment should be confirmed to manufacturer's specification turn ratio. Test results should maintain a normal deviation between each voltage step and should not deviate more than 1.5% to the calculated voltage ratio. Result of insulating liquid test should be in accordance. Evaluated results of dissolved gas analysis accordance with ANSI IEE C57 1.4 If no evidence of the day distress or insulation failure is observed by the end of the total time of the voltage application during the dielectric point stand voltage test the test specimen is considered to have passed the test so heater should be operational So for the next page, we have the ground fault protection system, low voltage. So the, the, for the visual and mechanical inspection, first verified ground system is in compliance with ANSI or National Electrical Code, Article 250. Second, inspect physical and mechanical condition. And last, inspect bolt, bolted electrical connection for high resistance using one or more the following methods, which is the use of the low resistance ohmmeter in accordance with section 7.13.2, verified tightness of the accessible bolted electrical connection by calibrated torch, branch method in accordance with the manufacturer published data or the table 100.12. For the electrical test, perform resistant measurement through bolted connection with a low resistant ohmmeter if applicable. Perform pole or potential or alternative test in accordance with IEE standard 81 on the main grounding electrode or system. Perform point-to-point -point test to determine the resistance between main grounding system on major electrical equipment frames system neutral and derived neutral points. For the test value, 
विशुअल एंड मैकेनिकल ग्राउंडिंग सिस्टम इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड मैकेनिकल कनेक्शन शुड बी फ्री ऑफ करोशन कंपेयर वोल्टेज कनेक्शन रिसिस्टेंस वैल्यूज वैल्यूज ऑफ सिमिलर कनेक्शंस वोल्टेज लेवल शुड बी इन अकॉर्डेंस विद मैन्युफैक्चरर पब्लिश डेटास for the test value electrical compare voltage connection resistance values to values of similar connection investigate values with deviate from those of the similar voltage connection by more than 50% of the lowest value the resistance between the main grounding electrode and the ground should be not greater than 5 ohms for the large commercial of industrial system and 1.0 ohm, 1 ohm or less than generating or transmission station grounds unless otherwise specified by the owner. And lastly, investigate point-to-point -point resistant values with excess of 0 0.5 ohms. So for the next page, ground fault protection system low voltage. For the visual mechanical inspection, first inspect the components for damage and errors in the polarity or conductor routing. Prior to cleaning the unit before a spawn test, clean the unit, inspect bolted electrical connection for high resistance, verify correct operation of all function of the self-test panel if applicable. Verify pick up and time delay settings in accordance with the settings provided in the owner's specifications. And lastly, perform a slip test. So for the electrical test, perform resistance measurement through bolted connection with a low resistance ohmmeter. Second, measure the system neutral ground insulation, resistance with neutral disconnect disconnect link print temporarily remove replace neutral disconnect link after testing perform insulation resistant test on all con control wiring with respect to ground perform ground fault protective device pick up test using primary current injunction for summation Type system utilizing phase and neutral current transformer. Verify correct polarities by applying current to each phase neutral current transformer pair. Next, measure time delay of the ground pole protective device at a value equal to greater than 150% of the pickup value. So, verify the reduced control voltage stripping capability is 55% for AC system and 80% for DC systems. And verify blocking up capability of zone interlock system. So for the test values, electrical, compare voltage connection resistant values to values of similar connections. System neutral to ground insulation resistance should be minima minimum of 1 mega ohm. Insulation resistant values of control wiring should be comparable of previous obtained result but not less than 2 mega ohms. Result of pickup test should be greater than 90% of the ground fault protection device pickup settings and less than 1200 amperes or around 25% of the pickup settings whatever is smaller so for the next slide we have the rotating machinery synchronous motors and generators so for the visual and mechanical inspection first inspect physical and mechanical condition inspect anchorage alignment and grounding inspect air baffles filtered media cooling fans sling rings, brushes, and brush ridging. Inspect bolted electrical connections. Perform special tests such as air gap spacing and machine alignment if applicable. 
verify the, applic the application of appropriate lubrication and lubrication systems, verify the absence of unusual mechanical and electrical noise or signs of overheating, verify the resistance temperature dictate detector, RTD, circuits confirmed to drawings, and for the electrical test, AC induction, Perform resistant measurement to voltage connection with a low system ohmmeter if applicable. Perform insulation resistant test. Perform DC dielectric with strand voltage test on a machine rated of 2300 volts and greater in accordance with the ANSI or IEE standard 95. Perform face to face stator resistant test on a machine 2300 volts and greater. So, perform insulation power factor or dissipation factor test. So, next, perform power factors tip up test. Perform surge comparison test. Perform insulation resistance test or insulation be bearings in accordance with manufacturer published data if applicable. Test surge protection devices in accordance with the section 7.19 and section 2. 7.20. Perform resistant test on resistance temperature detector RTD circuits. Verify operation of machines. Space heater if applicable. Perform vibration test. So for the test values, visual and mechanical inspection. First air, blade, air baffle should be clean. Filter media should be also clean. Cooling fan should operate. Slip ring should be within the bunch of factor tolerances for continued use. Brushes should be within manufacturer's tolerances for continued use. Brush ridging should be interact. So compare voltage connection resistant values of values of similar connection. Volt torque level should be in accordance with manufacturer published data. Result of the thermographic survey shall be in accordance with the section 9. So for the next slide, we have the rotating machinery, DC motors and generators. So for the next slide, we have the rotating machinery. DC motors and generators. So, what is rotating machinery or turbo machinery? So, it's a machine with rotating components that transfer energy to a fluid or vice versa. So, consequently, in a turbo machine, there is energy transfer between the fluid and the rotor through the dynamic interaction. So, for the electrical test, Compare bolted connection resistant with values to values of similar connection. The dielectric absorb absorption ratio or polarization shall be compared to previously obtained re result and should not be less than 1. If no evidence of distress or installation failure is observed, by the end of the total time of voltage application, during the dielectric Weinstrand voltage test, the test specimen is considered to have passed the test. So, investigate face-to-face -face data resistance values that deviate by more than 5%. Power factor dissipation factor value should be compared with previous values of similar machines up value should be indicated no significant increase in power factors if no evidence of distress insulation failure or lack of the waveform nesting it's observed by the end of the total time of the voltage application during the surge comparison test that the specimen is considered so for the next slide motor control motor control centers low voltage Refer to the section 7.1 for appropriate inspection and test of the motor control center bus. 
refer to the section 7.51.1 to the appropriate inspection and test of the motor control center switches. Refer to the section 7.6 for appropriate inspection and test of the motor control center circuit breakers. Refer to the section 7.16.1 for appropriate inspection and test for the motor control center starters. Motor control, motor control center, and medium voltage. Refer to the section 7.1 for appropriate inspection and the test of the motor control center bus. Refer to the section 7.1.2 for appropriate inspection and test of the motor control center switches. Sen refer to the section 7.6 for appropriate inspection and test of the motor control circuit breakers. Refer to the section 7.16.1.2 for appropriate inspection and test to the motor control center starters. So for the next slide, adjustable speed drive system. So for the visual mechanical inspection, inspect physical and mechanical condition, inspect anchorage, alignment, and grounding prior to cleaning the unit, perform as found test, and clean the unit. Ensure vent path operating are free from debris and that heat transfer surface are not contaminated contaminated by oil, dust, or dirt. 7. Motor running protection. Inspect bolted electrical connection for higher systems. Verify correct fuse sizing in accordance with manufacturer's published data and perform as left test. So for the next slide, we have the direct current system battery is flooded lead acid. For the visual and mechanical inspection, verify the battle area ventilation system is operable. Verify six set of suitable eye wash equipment. Inspect physical and mechanical condition. Inspect battery support trucks, mounting battery speed, containment system, encourage clearance alignment and grounding. Prior to cleaning or adding electrolyte, perform a spawn test if applicable. Verify electrolyte level. Measure electrolyte specific gravity and temperature levels. Verify presence of flame arrestors. Neutralize acid on the exterior terminals and apply an oxide inhibitor. Inspect both electrical connection for high resistance using one or more of the following methods. Use of all low resistance ohmmeter in accordance with the section 7181.1.2. Verify tightness of accessibly bolted electrical connection by calibrated torque range. Method in accordance with the manufacturer's published data or table 112. Perform a thermographic survey under load in accordance with the section 9. And last one, perform a slap test. So for the electrical test, perform system measurement through all the bolted connection. Measure charge float and equalizing voltage levels. Verify all chargers function and alarms. Measure each cell body total battery voltage to charge and arise. In a float mode of operation. So measure intercell connection resistances. Perform internal ohmic measurement test. Perform a load test in accordance with manufacturer's specifications. So for the test values, visual and mechanical, electrolyte level and specific gravity should be within normal limits. Compare voltage connection resistance values to value similar connections. Bolt torque level should be according to manufacturer published data. Result of thermographic survey shall be in accordance with section 9. And for the test value electrical, compared voltage connection resistance values to value similar connection. Charge float and equalized voltage level should be in accordance with the battery. Manufacturer published data. 
the results of charger function and alarm should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Cell voltage should be within 0.05 volts of each or in accordance with manufacturing published data. Compare voltage connection resistant values to values of similar connection. Cell internal ohmic values, resistant impedance and conductance. Volume should not vary for more than 25% between in identical cells that are fully charged state. Lastly, result of load. This should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Direct current system batteries, vetted nickel, candium. So for the visual and mechanical inspection, verify the battery area ventilation system is operable. Verify existence of suitable eye wash equipment. Inspect physical and mechanical conditions. Verify adequacy of battery support trucks or cabinets mounting battery wheels. Containment system, encourage alignment, grounding, and clearances. Prior to cleaning or adding electrode, perform as found test. Verify electrode level and measure pilot cell electrotype. Temperature. Verify the units are clean. Verify application of oxide inhibitor on battery terminal connections. Inspect voltage electrical connection for high resistance using one or more of the following methods. Use of low resistance ohmmeter. Verify tightness of resistible voltage electrical connection by the calibrated torque wrench method. Perform thermograph survey in accordance with the section 9 and perform a slip test an electrical test perform resistant measurement to all the voltage connection with low resistance ohmmeter if applicable measure charger float and equalizing voltage levels verify all chargers function and alarms Measure each cell voltage and total battery with charger energized in float mode of operation. Measure intercell connection resistances. Perform internal ohmic measurement tests. Perform a load test in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Measure the battery system voltage from positive to ground and negative to ground. For the test values, visual and mechanical, Electrolyte level shall be within normal limits. Compare voltage connection resistant values to values of similar connection. Volt torque level shall be in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Result of the thermographic survey shall be in accordance with CIS section 9. Next, the test values electrical, electrical. Either, sorry. Compared voltage connection, resistant values to values of similar connection, charger float and equalized voltage levels should be in accordance with manufacturer published data. Cell voltages should be within 0.05 volts or in, an, in, or in accordance with manufacturer published data. Compared voltage connection, resistant values to values similar connections. Cell internal ohmic values, resistance impedance or conductance should not be varied for more than 25% between identical cells that are fully charged in state or should be in accordance with the manufacturer's published data. Results of the load test should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data and published measurement from positive to ground should be equal in the magnitude to the values measured from negative to ground. So for the last slide, we have the direct current system batteries valve regulated lead acid. So for the visual and mechanical inspection, we have to verify the battery ventilation system is operable, verify the existence of suitable eye wash equipment, inspect physical and mechanical condition, inspect battery support rocks or cabinet mounting, encourage, encourage, 
clearances, alignment, and grounding. Prior to cleaning, perform a spawn test. Utilize acid on exterior surfaces and rinse with water. Clean corrode oxide terminals and apply an oxide, oxide inhibitor. Inspect bolted electrical connection for high resistance and perform a slip test. For the electrical test, we have to perform resistant measurement through all bolted connection with a low resistant ohmmeter if applicable. Measure negative post temperature, measure charge float and equalizing voltage levels, verify all charges function and alarms, measure each monoblock cell and total battery voltage with charger energized and if float mode of operation. Measure intercell connection resistances. Perform internal ohmic measurement test. And lastly, perform an annual load test. Annual load test in accordance with manufacturer's specifications. So for the test values, we have division and mechanical. Compared voltage connection with resistance values to value similar connections. Both torque level should be in accordance with manufacturer published data. Result of the thermographic survey shall be in accordance with the section 9. And test values electrical. First, we have to compare the voltage connection values to both similar connections. Negative post temperature shall be within manufacturing published data or IEE 1188. Charger float and equalized voltage level should be in accordance with the battery manufacturer's published data. Result of charger function and alarm should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Monoblock cell voltage should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data. And compared voltage connection resistance values to values of similar connections. Hello everyone, I'm Renz Luigi Barano. Uh, I will discuss the visual and mechanical inspection and their test. 7.18.2 Direct Current System Chargers. Visual and mechanical inspection is inspect for physical and mechanical condition, inspect anchorage alignment and grounding, three, prior to cleaning the unit perform a spawn test. Four, clean the unit. Five, inspect all bolted electrical connection for high resistance using one or more of the following methods. The following method is use of a low resistance ohmmeter in accordance with section 7.18.2. B, verify tightness of accessible bolted electrical connection by calibrated torque wrench method in accordance with manufacturer published data or table 100.12. See, perform a thermographic survey under load in accordance with section 9. 6. Inspect filter and tank, tank capacitor. 7. Verify operation of cooling fans. Clean filters if provided. 8. Perform as lab test. So, its, electri it's electrical test is uh, well perform resistance measurements through all bolted connections with a low resistance ohmmeter if applicable. In accordance with section 7.18.2, to verify float voltage, equalize voltage, and high voltage shutdown, and settings. Three, verify current limit. Four, verify current load sharing parallel chargers. Five, verify calibration of meters. In accordance with section 7.11.6. 6. I verify operation of alarms. 7. Measures and record input and output voltage and current. 8. Measure and record AC ripple current and or voltage imposed on battery. The asterisk as you see, as you can see, is unoptional. So, Asterisk 9, perform load testing of charger is optional. So, 
it has values and this one mechanical. One we compare voltage connection resistance values to values or similar connection investigate values which deviate from those similar voltage connection by more than 50% of the lowest value. 7.18.2.1.9. So, number two, bold torque level should be in accordance with manufacturer fabrication data. Three, results of the thermographic survey should be in accordance. The test values of electrical tests is compare voltage connection resistance values to values or similar connection investigate values that deviate from those of similar voltage connection by more than 50% of the the less value. Those plot and equalized voltage settings should be in accordance with battery manufacturers published data. The current limit should be within manufacturer's recommended maximum. Four, results of load sharing between parallel chargers should be in accordance with system design specification. Five, results of meter calibration should be in accordance. Section point seven. Well, Six, results of alarm operation should be in accordance with manufacturer published data in system design. Seven, input and output voltage should be in accordance with manufacturer published data. Eight, AC ripple current and voltage imposed on the battery should be in accordance with manufacturer published data. And the charger should be capable of manufacturer's specified full load. So, Surge arrestor low voltage surge protection device section 7.19.1. This one mechanism inspection, like uh, it's almost the same, it's almost the same in number four. So we proceed number five inspect voltage, inspect voltage electrical connections for high resistance using one or more following methods use of low resistance ohmmeter in accordance with section 7.19.1.2 and number two verify tightness accessible voltage electrical connection by calibrated torque range method in accordance so number six verify that ground lead at on device is individually attached to a ground bus or ground electrode perform a slap test so the same. Number two, electrical tests perform resistant measurements through ball connection with low resistance no meter if applicable in accordance. In section 7.19.1.1, to perform insulation resistance test on each arrestor from the phase terminal to ground, apply voltage accordance with manufacturer's data. Three, test grounding connection accordance with section 7.13. So the test values of this one mechanical is almost the same. The test values electrical is compare voltage connection, resistance value, values of similar connection. Investigate values with debate from those of similar voltage connection by more than 50% of the lowest value. Two insulation system values should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data in the absence of manufacturer's data use table. Number three, resistance between the arrestor ground terminal and the ground system should be less than 0 0.5 ohm in accordance with section 7.13. 7.19.2. So surge arrestor medium and high voltage surge protection devices. So it's almost the same in one, two, three, four. Um, but this one, mechanical special. It's almost the same in others. So proceed here. Number six, verify that ground lead on its device individually individually attached to the ground bus or ground electrode. Seven, verify that stroke counter a percent is correctly mounted and electrically connected. Eight, perform a slap test. Two electrical tests. Okay. Perform assistant measurement through voltage connection with a low resistance ohmmeter if applicable in accordance with section 7.19.2. To perform insulation resistance tests from phase terminal to case for one minute. Test voltage and minimum resistance should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data. 
lahat sila kailangan bumase sa manufacturers of this data. We need to cooperate in manufacturer. Three, test the grounding connection in accordance with section 7.13. For perform a what clause test in accordance with test equipment manufacturers published data. So the test values in visual and mechanical is almost the same, but the different is the table. Yeah. The loss value in section. Mm. Test value of the Well, compare bolted connection system values to values of similar connection. Investigate values with the weight from those of similar bolted connection by more than 50% of the lowest value. Two insulation resistance values should be in accordance with manufacturer's data. Lahat manufacturer's data kailangan talaga. Resistance between the arrestor's ground terminal and the ground system should be less than 0.5 accordance. Watch loss values are evaluated on comparison basis with similar units and test equipment manufacturers data. Published data. So, 7.20.1 Capacitors and reactors. Capacitors, visual and mechanical inspection is we proceed in number 5. Verify that capacitors, capacitors are electrically connected in their specified con and configuration. Six, inspect bolted electrical connection for high resistance using one or more of the following methods. One, use of low resistance ohmmeter in accordance with section 7.20.1.2. Verify tightness of accessible bolted electrical connection by calibrated torque method in accordance with manufacturing publish. The perform a demographic survey in accordance with section 9. The hat needs. Thermographic survey and perform a slab test. So electrical test perform resistance measurements through voltage connected connections with a low resistance ohmmeter if applicable. See section 7.20.1. Perform insulation resistance test from phase terminal to case for one minute. Test voltage and minimum resistance shall, shall be in accordance with manufacturer source data. Measure the capacitance of all terminal combination. Measure resistance of internal discharge resistors. The test value is yeah, you know, like others. Compare voltage connection. More than 50% of the lowest value. Voltage data. Yun, lahat. Data daw. Kailan sa manufacturer publish. And the result of thermographic survey. Thermographic survey. So, test values of electrical. So, compare voltage connection resistance values to values of similar connection investigate values which deviate from those of similar voltage connection by more than 50% of the lowest. So, yeah, insulation system values should be in accordance with manufacturer published data. Okay. Investigate capacitance values differing from manufacturers. Publish data. Well, investigate discharge resistor values differing from manufacturers' published data in accordance with ANSI or NFPA 70 National Electrical Code, Article 460. Residual voltage of a capacitor should be reduced to 50 volts in the following time intervals after being disconnected from the socialized data. So, less than 600. Less than equal 600 volts, the, the discharge time is one minute. The greater than equal 600 volts, the discharge time is five, five minutes. So, you see the 7.20.3.1. Capacitors and reactors, reactors, shunt and current limiting, dry type. So, this while in mechanical inspection, some of the same. And we proceed as of the electrical test. Perform resistance measurements through voltage connection with low resistance ohmmeter, if applicable in accordance with section 7.20.3.1.1. We perform winding to ground insulation system test, apply voltage in accordance with manufacturer's published data, and measure winding resistance, perform dielectric withstand voltage test on each winding to ground. 
So, the test value. Ayan. Proceed naman tayo sa electrical. Tapos pa test na eh. So, compare bolted connection system values to values of similar connection and investigate values with debate from those of similar voltage connection by more than 50% of the lowest value. Insulation resistance value should be in concordance with manufacturer published data. Uh, number three, finding resistance test results vary by more than 1% from factor test. Consult the manufacturer. Four, AC dielectric withstand test voltage shall not exceed 75% of factory test voltage for one minute duration. DC dielectric street stand test voltage shall not exceed 100% of the factory RM test, RMS test voltage for one minute duration. If no evidence of distress or insulation failure is observed by the end of the total time of voltage application during the dielectric stand voltage test, the test specimen is considered to have passed the test. So, we proceed to 7.20.3.2 capacitors and reactors. Reactors, shunt and current limiting in liquid field. So, visual in mechanical inspection is almost the same. Proceed in number five. Verify settings and operation of all temperature devices if applicable. Six, verify that cooling fans and pumps operate correctly and that pan and pump motor have correct overcurrent protection if applicable. Seven, verify operation of all alarm, control, and trip circuits from temperature and level indicators, pressure relief device, and fault pressure relay, if applicable. Eight, inspect voltage electrical connection for high resistance using one or more. So, voltage thermographic survey, we need low resistance. Um, Performance lab test. Uh, then, verify correct liquid level in all tanks and bushings. Verify that positive pressure is maintained on nitrogen blanketed reactor. Perform specific inspection in mechanical tests as recommended by the manufacturers. For 13, verify that top connection are specified if applicable. So, the electrical test. Send the time. Yon, perform winding to ground insulation system test. Apply voltage in accordance with the factor. Perform insulation power factor or dissipation factor test and winding in accordance with the test equipment on the factors published data. Four, perform power factor of dissipation factor test on each washing equip it with a power factor or capacitance stop in the absence of a power factor capacitance that perform hot color test. This test shall be accordance with the test equipment manufacturer. Five, measure winding resistance. Six, measure the percentage of oxygen in the nitrogen gas locket if applicable. Seven, remove a sample of insulating liquid in accordance with SMB. So these are the sample shall be tested. First, the electric breakdown voltage, acid neutralization number, Specific gravity, interfacial tension, color, visual condition, water insulating liquids. So required in 25 kilovolts or a higher voltage on all silicon field units. Duster is like what I said earlier. Duster is option, meaning is optional. So yeah, measure power optional. Remove a sample of insulation with the with ASTM D 3613 and perform dissolved gas analysis DGA in accordance with INSI or IEEE C57 or ASTM C36. So the test value is first operation of temperature device should be in accordance with system requirements, operation of pumps and fan. Should be in accordance with manufacturer's recommendation. Compare voltage connection resistance values to values or similar connection investigate values to be from those similar voltage connection by more than 50 percent of the lowest value. So, final results of the thermographic for six liquid level should be in accordance with manufacturer's indicated tolerance. 
7. Positive pressure should be indicated on the pressure gauge for gas blank at the reactors. So, 3.2 test values of electrical. So, okay. Pares lang. Tanya. Insulation resistance value should be in accordance with manufacturing cost data. Values of insulation resistance less than the stable or manufacturing data should be investigated. The polarization index should be greater than 1.0 and should be compared to previous data. Maximum power factor or dissipation factor values of liquid to reactor should be in accordance with manufacturer published data. In the absence of manufacturer's data compared to test equipment, manufacturer published data representative values are indicated in table 100.3. Power factor or dissipation factor in capacitance value should be within 10% of nameplate rating for bashings. Hot color tests are evaluated, evaluated on a milliampere, milliwatt loss basis, and the rest should be compared to a similar bashing. 5. For solve the manufacturer, if finding system values vary more than 1% from factory test. 6. Investigate presence of oxygen in the nitrogen gas blanket. 7. Insulating liquid body should be in accordance with table 100.1. 8. Evaluate results of dissolved gas analysis in accordance with IEE standard C examiner. So for result 2, so we use this data. Kailangan ikumpara natin ng result sa, ana, sa dating data previous. So 721, outdoor bus structure is almost the same. But the table and the section numbers. Yeah, six, clean the insulators. Yeah, for from a slab test to proceed electrical test. Perform resistance measurements through voltage connection with a lower resistance ohmmeter if applicable in accordance with section 7.21. Measure insulation resistance of each bus face to ground with other faces grounded but low voltage in accordance with manufacturers. Perform dielectric with stand voltage test on each bus face, face to ground with other faces grounded in accordance with one of the Test value. Uh, yeah. Insulation resistance value should be in accordance with If no evidence of distress or insulation failure is observed by the end of the total time of voltage application during the dielectric with stand voltage test, the test specimen is considered to have passed the test. Yeah. So 7.22.1 emergency system engine generator. Oops, the same. So we proceed in electrical mechanical test. Perform an insulation resistant test on the generator winding to ground in accordance with ANSI over IE standard quantity. I'll click the polarization index to test protective door lay devices in accordance with section 7.93. Functionally test engine shutdown for low oil pressure over temperature, over speed and other protection future as applicable. Perform vibration test for its main bearing cap. Conduct performance test in accordance standard. Yeah. Verify correct functioning of government and regulator. So test values. The test value electrical type. Insulation system value should be in accordance with ANSI, IE standard 43. The dielectric absorption ratio or polarization should be compared to previous obtained results and should not be less than 1.0. The recommended minimum insulation resistance. Parenthesis AR, one minute. Test results in mega ohms should be corrected to. 40 degrees Celsius and read as follows. IR one minute equals KB plus one for most winding made before 1970. All field windings and others not described in 2.2 and 2.3. Kilovolt is the weighted machine terminal to terminal voltage in RMS KB. For two, IR one minute equals 100 mega ohm for most DC armature and AC winding built after 1970. Form one twice. IR, 1 minute, 5 mega ohms for most machines and random one. Stator coils in farm 1, so it's rated below 1 kb. Note, dielectric with stun voltage high potential and surge capacitors will not be performed on machines 
having values lower than those indicated above. So, without natin ma-perform if V high potential voltage. Protective relay device result. Test results will be in accordance with section 7. Low oil pressure over temperature, over speed, and other protection features should operate in accordance with manufacturer's system design requirements. Vibration level should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data and shall be compared to baseline data six. Performance test should be. I should confirm to manufacturer published data in NSI or NFPA standard ones here. Governor and regulator should operate in accordance with manufacturer insistent design requirements. So, 722.22 Emergency system and interruptible power system. Note, there are many configurations of uninterruptible power supply solution. Some are as simple as a static switch selecting between two highly reliable sources, while other are complex system using a combination of rectifiers, batteries, inverters, motors, generators, static switches, and bypass switches. It is the intent of the specification to so possible test and maintenance of the major components of the system. And more specifically, the system as a whole is important that the manufacturer man that it has been important na sa manufacturers tayo mag recommend and maintenance be performed na be performed natin kailangan manufacturers na so the visual is almost the same yeah that's all electrical and mechanical interlock system for correct operation sequencing respected electrical of high voltage mm -hmm. perform muscle labs Check operation of first ventilation, then verify that filters are in place and or vents are clear. So, perform an electrical test, perform measurement voltage, plus static transfer from inverter to bypass and back. Use normal load if possible. Set pre running frequency of oscillator. Test this under voltage, state level, and inverter input breakers set according to manufacturer's switch data. Test alarm circuits, verifying indicators for static switch and bypass switches. Perform electrical test for UPS system breakers in accordance in section 761. Perform electrical test for UPS system automatic transfer switches in accordance with section 7.22.3. Perform electrical test for UPS system batteries in accordance with section 7.82. Perform electrical test for UPS rotating machinery in accordance with 7.15 section. Yeah. Test value of piece one mechanical. Checking minus in the lock should be in the system. Wala. Wala lang. Test value tayo. Yung di tayo sa static transfer box yun. For dance for this data. So the latest programming frequency should be in manufacturer. This under voltage should be should be inverter and input breaker. Time alarm circuit should be in accordance. Stand indicators operate. Your okay, performance should be in accordance with 7361. Yeah. So emergency system automatic transfer switches. Same we proceed number five. Use appropriate lubrication and moving to carry parts and moving. And sliding surfaces. Six, verify that manual transfer warnings are attached and visible. Seven, verify tightness of all connections. Eight, inspect voltage electrical connection for high resistance using one or more than following methods. Use up a low resistance, very tight accessible, darkness. Nine, verify manual transfer operation, verify positive mechanical interlocking between normal and alternating sources. Perform a slip test. So perform electrical test, perform isolation assistance, test on all control wiring respect to the ground the apply, apply the applied potential should be 
500 volts DC for 300 volt rated cable and 1000 volts DC for 600 volts rated cable. Test during test duration should be one minute per unit with solid state components or for control devices that cannot tolerate that apply voltage follow manufacturer's recommendation. Three, perform a contact or pole resistant test. For verify settings and operation of control devices, five calibrate and set all relation timers before the section 7.9. Six, perform automatic transfer test, simulate loss of power, normal power, return to normal power, normal power, simulate loss of emergency power, simulate all forms of single phase condition. Number seven, verify correct operation and the timing. These are the following functions normal source voltage sensing, frequency sensing delays, engine start sequence. Time delay upon transfer, alternate source, voltage sensing and frequency sensing relays, automatic transfer operation, interlock and limit switch function, time delay in transfer upon normal power station, engine cooldown and shutdown feature. These are the verified for correct operations in type of timing. Done. Test value, push it in electrical. Yan. Insulation resistance value should be comparable to PVC. The micro arm or DC millivolt drop value should not exceed in the high levels of the normal range as indicated in the manufacturer's published data. Control devices should operate in accordance with this data. Relay test results should be in accordance. Six, automatic test should operate in accordance with design. Seven, operation and timing should be in accordance with manufacturer's system design. The hat, the process, the manufacturers, or the system design. So, automatic circuit, clear closers, and line sectionalizers, sectionalizers, automatic circuit, clear closers, oil, or wear vacuum. So, visual and mechanical inspection was the same. We proceed number five perform all mechanical operations and contact. Alignment tests on both the reclosers and each operating mechanism and all the guns. Cardens, we turn the factory for this data. Six, inspect the voltage, use low, and spec. Seven, inspect for correct insulating liquid level if applicable. Number eight, perform a step test. Next test. Perform assistance, slow connection, and retire. That is electrical test. Number two, perform insulation resistance test for one minute. On each pole, face to face and face to ground with the closer, close and across each pole in the closer open. Apply voltage in accordance with the manufacturer. So, perform a contact or pole resistance test. Optional, perform solution resistance test on current. Apply potential should be 500 DC for 300 volts rated cable and 1000 volt DC for 600 volt. Yeah, test duration will be one minute for units with solid state and components. Follow the manufacturer recommendation. Five, remove of sample insulating liquid if applicable in the start. So, yeah. Perform. And yeah, yeah, optional. Masteries. Uh, perform the... Button to put in the electrical across is vacuum battle with the closer the position in the strict accordance. Manufacturer for this data. Then perform the electric stand. Voltage test on its face with the closer close in the first time. Under test the test voltage should be in accordance with. And verify operational features if applicable. Test all protective function in accordance with section 7.9. Test all metering summation in accordance with section 7.11. Test instrument transform transform in accordance with section 7.10. The test value is. Test values is. So, let's see, it should be according to manufacturing story rights. Then, the test value is electrical. And 
advertised number three. Micro or DC millivolt drop value should not exceed the high levels of the normal range as indicated in the manufacturers. So investigate values that debate from adjacent poles or similarly closest by more than 50% of the lowest value. So far, insulation resistance values of quotes of wiring should be comparable to previous obtained results, but not less than 2 mega ohms. So number five, insulated liquid test results should be accordance. So minimum pickup for trip and close coils should confirm the manufacturer's published data. Yeah. Okay, na isa isa in. Kasi yun lang yung mga sagot dun sa test value, sa electrical test. So, the 7.24.2 automatic circuit closures in line. Sectionalizer, automatic line, sectionalizer coil. So, parehas lang. So, yung test error, 5. Perform all mechanical operation and contact alignment tests on the both sectionalizers. Sectionalizer and separation mechanism for this one. So, yeah. All this now. Number eight, spec for insulated level eight performance lab test. Number two, performance insulation resistance for one minute of inch fall, face to face, and face to ground with sectionalizer close and across each open pole. This is uh, electrical test. Apply voltage in accordance. Sure. Three, perform a contact fall system test. Four, remove a sample insulating liquid. A hard dance with ASTM D923. Let's take the hard dance. Then, my reference standard is the electrical direction voltage, color, the visual condition. Five, perform the electric with stand voltage test on each pole. To ground and pole to pole. Six takes sectionalizers counting function the simulated pole current greater than 160. Seven test sectionalizers lock out function of all counting position. Test eight test for reset timing and tip of control. And optional. So the value mechanical value. Ito lang rin yan. Yung mga tanong kayo na ito. Proceed na lang tayo sa 5. If no evidence of stress relation is observed by the end of the total time of the position during the delta Kingston voltage test, the test specimen is due to have passed. 5. Operation cutter should advance 1 digit per close open cycle. 7. Lockout function should operate in accordance. With manufacturers, a reset, reset timing of trip actuator should operate in accordance with manufacturers. Nine public a public power factor or dissipation factors values in tank plus index should be compared to manufacturers. <laughs> power factor or dissipation factors capacity value should be within ten percent of main plate waiting for bashing. Hot color tests are evaluated on a million per milliwatt loss basis, and the results should be compared to values of similar values. So, but, uh, five, uh, five pair of the cables. And the visual mechanical inspection is inspect cable and connection for physical and mechanical damage. Verify that all connectors splices are correctly installed. Two optical tests. Perform cable length measurement, fiber fracture inspection, and construction defect inspection using an optical time domain reflectometer. To perform connector and splice integrity tests using an optical time domain reflectometer. Three, perform cable attenuation. Antonuation, antonuation, loss measurement, and return optical power loss test set. For perform connector splice antonuation loss measurement from both ends of the optical with an optical power loss test set. And test values of the cable connection of the subjected physical damage connector splice should be installed in accordance with industry standards. 
to yun nga, the optical time flash signal should be analyzed for excessive connections by cable box cutter by viewing the reflected power or the sun. Number two, the optical time domain reflector meter signal should be analyzed excessive. And maturation loss should be expressed in DM or KM losses should be within the band of concentration. System function test. Uh, it is the purpose of system function test to prove the correct interaction of all sensing, processing, and action devices. Perform system function test upon completion of the maintenance test defined as system condition allowed. First, develop test parameters and perform test for the purpose of evaluating performance performance of all internal reports and their function in a complete unit. Design economics and analysis. Verify the correct duration of all internal safety devices for field safe function. Yeah. yeah, this is the thermographic survey. It's just ugly. Lah. The visual inspect the physical and mechanical. This one is panel covers or view the equipment through viewing parts design to transmit applicable signals being. Yan, ganyan lang. It's parameters. Yan. Thank you. May papakita rin ako. Na... Here's the... New shares. Ito yung mga table ng mga binanggit kanina. Hindi ko na isa-isayin kasi nandiyan na sa picture. Yung solution system to values electrical apparatus system. Start, hindi ko rin maan ito kasi ito yata. Test voltage, stand voltage. Mga value. Solutions. Yan, mga table. Ano mga nabanggit ka na doon? Nasulat doon. in London. Thank you. Salamat sa pakikinan. Bye.